Thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Tickme Pink. Today we're going to be talking about all the changes that came with 12.4, including account resets, the new interchange, and the new weight system. Let's hop straight into it. Big thank you to the sponsor of this video, Easy NPC. For any Tarkov rubles, fast and safe, make sure to go check out their website and go ahead and use my coupon code TICKLE for 5% off. Alright guys, what's going on? So today, we got a whole bunch of changes added to Tarkov in 0.12.4, namely being interchange, the weight system, and accounts reset. So when you first scale, the first thing you might notice is on your character, your endurance and your strength have actually been reset down to zero. Now, now your entire account has been reset, just your strength and your endurance because there was a bug going around where people could glitch out of the map in factory and get max strength and endurance. So that's been patched out. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I, for one, actually did use that glitch. I, I think strength and endurance are great for fast paced PVP. And it's really one of the only ways as a, a solo player that you can actively like 1v5 consistently because not being able to move against big groups, you just get nade spammed out. But you know, you can go ahead and smash the, the you can go ahead and smash the dislike button and tell me to kill myself in the comments down below if you're not happy with that. I was gonna tell you guys to do that one anyways. But yeah, guys, they patched that one out, so we're all gonna be walking around really, really slow. The re main reason I did this is I was worried about this new weight system. So let's go ahead and talk about that. All right, so I loaded into an offline raid, and as you can see, I am moving it maximum speed right now if i hold down sprint this is what happens so you got that charge up time before you can actually sprint and it just eats away at it so once again watch the little chevron on the uh, x-axis here so you have to charge it up into a sprint so you can't even like immediately sprint and that's because i load up my backpack with batteries so earlier the max you could carry was 60 kilograms they've now changed it to 70 kilograms once you break that threshold and it goes in the red you'll be just moving at like broken leg speeds even actually i feel like we're already at that point so um if you grabbed like three weapons let's say you killed two or three dudes this is how fast you'd be able to move out of the raid so it's kind of unbelievable y'all there's also this new head bobbing effect you'll see that more in a little bit but you'll know you'll start getting the effects of overweight when you have this symbol and the debuff reads, you make more noise, reduce jump height, stamina drain increase, fall damage increase, movement speed decrease, and walking will drain your stamina. So if I go ahead and drop my batteries, go ahead, just a normal set, this is what I wear to most raids, is going to go ahead, and I normally have more stuff in my gamma container too, because I usually keep three stacks of ammo in there. That's going to put us at 28 kilograms, so... We're just barely under that threshold, but as soon as I pick anything up, it's going to go ahead and fuck with me. Also, there was a slight change to recoil. We'll get more into waste in a second. I hate to, like, jump around. But as you can see, your screen does not move with your gun anymore. It would be here. I'm going to go ahead and take my stock off. To go ahead and accentuate this. But your screen does not move with your gun anymore. You see that? It just fucking fires around randomly. So accounting for recoil is super awkward now. Uh, it's definitely a big nerf to, you know, skill-based gunplay. Because now when I get on my scab and I have a stock AK, you know, the, the spread looks like that a lot of the time. And it's really hard to control. You see that? Like, once you actually play with it, you'll notice how weird it is. Now, if you're playing with, uh, you know, max-built guns, it really isn't a factor at all. Because, you know, with all our attachments on... You know, still super, super tight spray patterns. If anything, it's a buff. But I just hate to see changes like this that are actively removing skill-based PvP. You know, when I was big on Twitch you know, a year or two ago, I was always preaching, like, they shouldn't add the modes in. Always go for skill-based PvP. Make it so PvP is the main factor. And the game, everyone told me I was stupid. And a lot of the changes that I was very against are changes people still bitch about. So... Tell BSG about this. I see everyone talking about the weight system, but this is a serious issue right here, in my opinion. Going back onto the weight system, you'll see that there's a blue bar in the bottom. Now, that is our arm stamina. So, ergonomics will affect this, but this does seem like a nerf to ergonomics as well. So, once we go ahead and drain all of our arm stamina, you'll see we can also do this when we uh, hold down the button. I forget what it is. I rebound mine. I'm sorry. But the button to hold your breath while you're aiming is going to go ahead and it's going to go through a little bit more stamina but also when you're done doing it 
your character is out of breath sometimes. It doesn't like he's out of breath that time, but he's actually out of breath from holding his breath, and you'll get this uh, head bob effect. Let's see what happens when we drain all of our arm stamina here. I've only tested this with sniper rifles earlier. Oh, there you guys see that? Now I got this arm bob effect. Now it's going to slowly regenerate. The one nice change to these stamina changes is now you can go ahead and you know aim move around while you're regenerating your leg stamina so you can go ahead move to a position and then you know check it out while you're regenerating your leg stamina so in the past especially when you're on thermals you'd notice this like you would sprint and then scope sprint and scope and you'd always be out of stamina you really had to manage your stamina but now that's a, a definite buff to that but like i was saying this is a slight nerf to ergonomics because that's what made ergonomic guns super super viable is being able to move around and then still peek around corners and stuff. So this is another nerf to ergonomics. I like to run high ergonomics because I love the fact that my weapon will sway with where I am. This is one of my low ergonomic builds, believe it or not. And it's still much higher than most people's weapons. But the new weight system will definitely be weird because while you're, the higher your weight system is, or the higher, the more you're carrying the more your like movements you'll be turned so like all your muscle memory all your muscle memory will be gone again this is another nerf to you know skill based gunplay i'm kind of stuttering over myself i'm sorry i just woke up here just not that long ago so i do apologize but um i did play the patch for quite a few hours earlier and it's basically like wearing ford armor so i really think the change to movement speed needs to be taken out at the very least or, and your turn speed because that really affects your muscle memory and like getting into PvP engagements. I know they want to go for realism, but I think that um, we should strive for realism while also having like a, a good game because at the end of the day, it is just a video game. And Nikita, you know, he's a super, super talented guy, but I think he's a little overzealous and the fact that um, he really overestimates himself. So in the past, Nikita has updated some very questionable changes and just kind of like, you know, doubled down and made us deal with them. And these are changes that people still put up with today, but are definitely not great for the game. Unfortunately, the one suggestion I have for a temporary solution that I would like personally is um, make it so that every time you level up, you actually get a few skill points to spend in your skill tree. Because right now there really isn't any effective way to leveling these. Um, it's ridiculous. It, it really is. I think with, um, it was like 1500 hours. I was at like 37 endurance or something. And that's just like play time of just running around. So I know these aren't meant to be easy, but there really isn't any effective way of training these. So actually leveling up and being able to use like a skill tree system would be very interesting. But that's it for the weight changes. The weight changes in my opinion are really bad. You can let me know what you think of them in the comments down below. A lot of people have flocked to Twitter already saying they're quitting the game, and these are getting a lot of upvotes. I think like 10,000 upvotes on these posts of people just saying they're going to quit the game over these changes. I haven't seen this much backlash on BSG ever. Normally, uh, BSG has kind of like a cult following where they really don't uh, talk back, and whatever BSG says kind of goes, but people really are not enjoying this patch so far. I ideally would like to see them roll it back, but I digress. Alright, so now we're on the new interchange. As you can see, once again, this is as fast as I can walk without our car batteries here. There's one more stamina change I want to show you guys. I'm going to quickly just go ahead and run. Also, this was nerfed, like the B-hopping. It's just It might just be because my stats are lower, though. But we're going to use all of our stamina up. And um, we're going to let it recharge a little again. And if you use your stamina too many times, I guess you go into this like exhaustion mode. It's gonna be accompanied with like this like ridiculous head bob effect. Let's see if I can uh, if I can get it here. We're actually making our way over to the power station. So now you can turn a switch on in the power station to get all you know, all the lights going. I thought it would really turn on all the lights in the mall. Maybe turn the escalators on, but it's a uh, very very little effect. It's gonna turn some store alarms on and stuff, but don't. Don't worry about that. I'll show you guys that in just a second once we made it, make it over there. Additionally, there is new extractions on Interchange. So if you've been playing Interchange for like the last month or two, it's going to be pretty bad. Lots of extraction campers. Um, about like two or three weeks ago, every single raid had an extraction camper in it. And um, I don't run into that quite as much anymore. I feel like those players, the players that pivot into like the giant hacker problem we have now, still no word from Battle State as to like what they're going to do about that. But that's crazy. If you don't know, there's hacks going around the game right now that actually enable players to just go ahead and drop all of your items 
from your inventory and it drops them over in front of them. And although you can't drop your gamma container in raid, they can drop your red rebel, but if they don't bring a container into the raid, they can just loot yours and put yours on them. They don't have to drop it. They can just like go ahead and alt click it onto themselves. So got to be really careful of that one. So made over to the power station now. We're going to flip this switch and I'm going to explain the new extractions in the game. So here's the switch. Got to be careful. Um, players are going to be camping this a lot now. But just watch out. They can get up on top through that staircase. They can hide in these windows. Or they can just hide down low. I also saw a five-man group hiding these capacitors earlier. So be really careful of that. Um, we're going to work our way inside the mall. So new extractions we have. So we go ahead and double O. We're going to see Emercom. That's an old uh, extraction down that way over by the road. And then Railway was over there. Those are the two extractions we had before, right? Now we have Scav Camp, Hole in the Fence, and Safe Room Xville. Yeah, the nearest one to us is actually going to be Hole in the Fence. It's just going to be just down here. Now, what we need to know about Hole in the Fence before we actually get to it is it's one of the extractions, kind of like the one on reserve, or that used to be, or no, it's still on reserve, the manhole, that um, you have to take your backpack off, or the vents on labs, you also have to take your backpack off. But it's going to be just down here. We have to walk for quite a ways. So keep that in mind if you're going for that extraction. The next extraction we have to talk about is scav camp. Now, when this extraction works, is it's like the one on reserve as well, where you have to bring a, a player scav to it to befriend you. So I'm not even going to cover this extraction, because honestly, it's like a cool idea, but um, it's just not viable. Players just really aren't that intelligent, believe it or not. Like, uh, I can't run into a player scav and have him could like work with me without trying to fucking, you know, like, Alu Akbar me and send me back to Lumbridge, so... That's just not viable. Maybe when VoIP comes into the game, that'll be vo viable. But, um, yeah, we're going to keep walking down here. It should be just a little farther. And the last one we have is Safe Room Xville. So, Safe Room Xville is going to require a key card that is dropped from Killa now. I haven't bought it yet because it's going for, like, 20 million rubles on the flea market last time I checked. And it's kind of ridiculous. But we have a bunch of steps to open that. I'm going to show you that in just a second when we go inside the mall. And right here, here's hole in the fence. It's the first time I've actually been to it. Once I saw it was a no backpack extraction, I was just like, well, fuck it. I'm not going to go to that because uh, these extractions, I think I've used the one on reserve like one time ever. And that's just because I was like one health, no meds. They're just like not very viable extractions. You know, I, I get on the game to uh, go ahead and frag kids. But um, let's go ahead and get into the mall. Now, the new lighting does look astonishing. There's also not lots of lights you can knock out. So I think nighttime interchange is going to be much more of a real thing because in the past, nighttime interchange is basically the same as daytime interchange. I'm also going to show you guys this cool little connector area they decided to add to the underground area. So if you guys have played uh, interchange a lot in the past, you know there's two sections of the underground section. So right now, we're on the Goshan side, and then there's the side towards railway. And you couldn't like get to the other side from the other one. They were just like completely separated. And there were two separate parking garages. But now, there's this new hole in the wall. And it's actually right next to this uh, this safe room exfil. So I'll go ahead and show you guys this. It should be just around the corner. You see up there that, that hole in the wall right there? This is honestly a little thing, but it's actually really big for this map. This adds a, like, a lot of movement you can do this map. You can now spawn on that truck next to hole in the fence run through this and uh that's weird oh never mind actually so we're hearing the alarm right there i thought that was actually the kiba alarm but as you can see that's the new hole we'll come back to this door in just a moment here so generators will run before the electricity is turned on as well but let's take a moment and just look at the lighting here it looks really, really good, especially the neon signs. That's one thing I have to say about this patch. However, I did drop a lot of frames. I dropped about 70 frames on an interchange, which is uh, not ideal. Oh, oh, okay. We're just not going to jump up there. Not you seven low strength yet. But um, you guys will see. I'm going to quickly point this out. Above the store, maybe we got to get a little closer here for it to render in. You'll see that extraction sign. They're common among factory extractions. I don't know why they added this to there, because there is no extraction there, no matter which side you spawn on. So, yeah, keep that in mind. But yeah, the lighting looks really good on these neon signs. Let's see if there, we can 
across one of the newer ones. Like, Jacob and Jacob's upstairs looks phenomenal. But you're hearing stores go off now. So, the alarms just go off. I was thinking when I watched the original, um, not trailer, but stream with Nikita explaining everything. And you're seeing this head bob from the stamina effect right now. I was thinking that the, um... These detectors, like these metal detectors, were actually going to trigger these. So I thought that would be really fun for like these, you know, these dark little little corners. Because before these lights were added, this is a pretty, pretty dark area, and people would sometimes sit back here and like hide behind clothing and stuff. But um, no, they just, you know, go off all the time, and I'm already getting annoyed. So let's get out of here. But look at this like ambient lighting come from this. It looks really, really good in my opinion, actually. I can't deny that. We're just seeing a little bit of like the the light bleed through from Goshan back there. The lighting does look significantly better right now. And keep in mind, I'm playing on like very low settings, but Jacob and Jacobs, Mantis, it looks even better up there. I'm sure it looks amazing on nights. So I'm off to come check this out later. But we're gonna open Kiba really quickly, and I'm gonna show you guys. So this was supposed to spawn raiders, but for some reason it's just not implemented yet. Unfortunately, I was really hyped for that. But apparently, they're gonna make Kiba spawn really good loot and spawn raiders but at the moment the loot in it is the exact same and you get that obnoxious alarm this is about the best thing you're gonna find here other than like a reaper but as you see that actually put me overweight so going over 30 kilograms puts you overweight i was hoping that uh 35 kilograms would be the overweight section um now that they buffed it to 70 as opposed to 60 because it was half of whatever your max carry capacity was before and I was hoping with a buff of 10 kilograms that they would change it to 35 leaves, but it doesn't look like that's the case. But, that's obnoxious. We're going to head up the stairs right now, and I'm going to show you guys Killa's new, uh, he has a new hide, not hideout, but uh, stash per se. And props to Geekzit for figuring this out. At least, I'm not sure, he may have seen it on Reddit or something else. I'm not sure, but I saw it for the first time on his channel, so I thought that was badass. But we're going to go ahead into his burger spot here. It's literally called Burger Spot, and not go into there, but we're actually going to the bathrooms over here. And take a right-hand turn, and you're going to find this urinal. Now, I do not have the key card on me, but you're going to need the power off that. And that is really fucking cool, you know? It's crazy that, like, little things like this are like my favorite thing in the patch like the lighting in this man the stamina change can go fuck itself but you know this is cool so i don't actually have the key card on me like i said last time i checked it was 20 mil i wasn't interested in buying that um hopefully you guys can understand but um yes yeah, so i'll show you what it does so once you go ahead and use the key card in that and once again you can get that key card from killa it appears people are reporting multiple ways of farming it but i'm sure we'll figure out within like the next week or so you'll go ahead and you'll use that key card and then we're going to work our way back down to uh, drop down over here, as me and my friends like to call it. Alright, once we go down drop down, it'll actually be right next to that hole in the wall we went through. So, right over here, around this corner, you'll see all this lighting. And there's that, we'll just call it sea hole from, from now on. But, um, so the sea hole right here, there's an annoying generator, you just can't get away from everything that's fucking loud and annoying in this game right now. It's basically reserve 2.0, and this door, you'll actually be able to open once you have that power turned on, and you've swiped your keycard on the toilet, you can move your way down here. Now, I'm not sure if this is a one-time use or not, we'll see, um, but you'll be able to go into here, and if you close the door, you'll be able to extract additionally there's gonna be a lever inside of there i'll actually show it maybe i'll maybe i'll uh, show part of geek Say's video here but well, there's gonna be a lever inside of here you can pull and that will go ahead and open kill a stash so i'll take you to, over to where that's gonna spawn we gotta go back towards the power station so really going full circle here but um uh, just be warned it's really really underwhelming unfortunately so if you want to skip ahead i'm gonna be covering the equipment they've added to this game after or the equipment they've added with this patch right after this and I'll see you guys over there. But we're going to run this way until we get basically over to the uh, the power plant again. And um, I don't know. This is definitely interesting. I was hoping for a little more, to be honest. Uh, I really would have liked to see, like, interactive. Um, like, so, like, maybe multiple generators for them all. Or, like, maybe not generators. I'm cool with, like, the power station being the main source of power. But maybe, like, sections where it can be turned off along the mall. And maybe, like, places where, like, the escalators get turned on. That's, like, a very small feature, but I think that would be really, really badass. 
Um, Raiders actually coming in will be great. Uh, I don't know. This this new lighting is cool. Man, I'm cross-eyed. This new recoil feels really, really weird. I've kind of been advocating for them to go ahead and add more recoil to guns for a long time. But this basically just completely gets rid of compensating for recoil as it is. And now moving and shooting is super inaccurate. It already was really bad once they nerfed it once. And now it's even more inaccurate. And you can't stutter shoot like you can in CSGO if you're like above Supreme. So it's... Uh, I really don't like this change. I really hope they roll back. Everyone's talking about the weight system, but I really hope they roll back the recoil system more than anything. It's going to remove a lot of skill from this game, but uh, that's just my opinion. Also, they've uh, adjusted the way players sound, so it's based off your weight again, but apparently they've equalized the sound of like stepping on grass, stepping on concrete, stepping on glass. And stepping on metal. Now, stepping on concrete actually seems like the loudest of the bunch. Now, stepping on metal, wood, and glass in the past were definitely much, much louder. But, yeah, I had a firefight earlier where someone was sprinting, like, right here in front of me. And there's just, like, a small thing in front of it, front in front of us. I had swords on, and I couldn't even hear him moving because he was on grass. So, watch out for that. Comtac's going to be more relevant. They're, they're better picking up people on grass. But, um, yeah, shoot for thought. Uh, so once you get back to the generator area, we're going to run this way, go past the little uh, German flag on this truck, and go into the next entrance in the uh, underground parking section. But yeah, we're going to go into the mall right here, and you'll see up there, you'll see all these containers. That's where our, we're going. Or maybe it, it might be these containers, actually. I think it's those containers. We'll see. I hear a generator in here, though, so that's kind of peculiar. No, okay, it's not this one. I got the dumb. I'm sorry, guys. Like I said, I wasn't the one that figured this out. My brain is far too small to figure stuff like this out. There, yeah, right here. So, man, this head bob effect is fucking annoying. Anyways, you'll see this right here. Uh, this door will open up, and I'll go ahead and show footage of what's inside. The loot's pretty underwhelming, but again, props to Geeksake. Go give him a sub and a like. He's a really cool guy. Um, he's a he's a newer Tarkov streamer and YouTuber as far as I know. I don't know. I don't really... You know, I've kind of been MIA for about a year, so I'm not really sure. But he's new as far as I know. Maybe he's he has a lot of skin in the game. I don't know. Seems like a really cool guy. Seems like a friendly Canadian. I've, I've watched his streams quite a bit. I like him. Um, I guess I thought I'd quickly show you guys these um, these key cards that are new to the game here. Also, this is a new key. 205, West 205 for um, Shoreline will now have a red key card as well as two LED X spawns, just so you guys know. But we have these two key cards. We have um, 11 SR, and that's going to be the key card for the uh, the loot room I showed you that's underground, as well as the one that's going to be able to swipe on the urinal to get you out of the map. And then we have 21 WS. I'll quickly show you guys where 21 WS goes to. All right, once we're in the raid, this thunder would fuck off. I'm trying to record a video over here. We're going to have to work our way. Um, down this wall over here. So this is the ghost shot extraction if you're not familiar with where I'm at. We're gonna run towards the, the um, there's like a blue fenced in cargo area over here outside of Ollie. And that's actually gonna be where the next keypad is at. Now if you remember like about a year and a half ago there used to be this red crate when interchange came out that you could jump up on top of and it potentially could spawn Ford armor. It was super super rare. And this was when like really items didn't spawn anywhere. You really only got your money from killing things for the most part. Um, that has actually become a locked crate, and it's going to be just like the stash I showed you before. Alright, once we get into this area, we're just going to quickly go over here, hop up onto these pallets, hop up again, and here it is. You'll be able to swipe the key, and once again, um, I'll show you guys some screenshots of what's inside. But yeah, guys, that covers it for interchange. Alright, one item I forgot to cover earlier that we just bought for 8 million rubles, I believe it was is the grenade case. Now it holds 64 slots, grenades only, and we're going to quickly test to see if it can go in your gamma container. It cannot go in your gamma container. So that would have been a lot of fun, unfortunately. They uh, they thought of that. No fun allowed in Tarkov. So <laughs> yeah, guys, um, I think that just about covers it. There's new grenades as well. We got the VOG-17. It's going to have less damage per frag, a smaller explosive radius, but it's going to have a, a faster um, like fuse time, so keep that in mind. But yeah, new grenade box. Very, very radical, dude. Very radical. I can finally quit using this uh, this, AV, this AV-18 or whatever it's called that I was using to hold my grenades up there earlier. 
And if you guys are liking this video so far, go ahead and smash that dislike button and tell me to kill myself in the comments down below. Also, join my Discord again. I would like to get my Discord popping again. I miss the days of seeing like 40 or 50 people in the voice channels every time I joined there. Like my my Discord used to be the unofficial Discord for Tarkov basically, but uh, it's basically dead now. I mean, that's what happens when you go MIA for a year. But I'm back. We're cranking out these videos. I love to see all my little brainlets. And uh, yeah, I don't know, we're, we're coming back to uh, rightfully claim my spot as the deadliest man in Tarkov and uh, the face of Twitch as soon as I get unbanned on Twitch. <laughs> Never forget. So I actually bought the new armor right here. We're going to go ahead and just go buy it again because I lost it earlier. I took it in and a guy with a pistol shot me in the face. <laughs> Uh, ironically enough, oh, it's actually gone up in price, but that's okay. Well, I bought my first one for 2 million rubles, I think it was. But um, I saw them as low as 250 earlier. So this is basically, like, if you like to wear, I don't see very many people that run Zuck. But if you like to run Zuck, this is better than Zuck. So look at this, guys. We're going to go ahead and compare this to Zuck. This is the best piece of equipment that came into the game, in my opinion. So Zuck has a max HP of 75. This has 80. They're both armor class 6. And armor areas here is this is just thorax versus versus this is thorax and stomach. And I'll explain why you actually just want thorax in a second here. Material armor steel versus ceramic. Now these ceramic plates do not um, they don't repair very well. You're actually going to be getting more of a movement speed nerf with 13% on Zuck versus 10% with this new plate carrier. A change of training speed of only 2% versus 5% with the Zuck. Ergonomics minus 1% versus 6%. And like I said, only covers the chest. Now the reason why you want that is like if you watch my streams i go for multiple squad fights i try and wipe every single player on the map every single raid so with this armor that's why uh, i like killer armor because it repairs really nice but i really do prefer prefer things like the tactic that only cover my chest because i can get in multiple engagements and not have to worry about like half of my armor being basically a null zone so for a long time if you watched my stream a year ago Everyone wore Gen 4 um, with the like the sleeves because it has more HP. And technically, if armor has more HP, then it's more likely to stop a bullet. That's why this 80 HP is better than 75. You know, versus an M61, it's more likely to stop two M61s. So keep that in mind. And it's also better just to have more durability in general to work with. But you don't want to have a bunch of thrash areas. So if you have something like the Gen 4 that has arm sleeves or Ford armor. All of your arms, your stomach, part of your groin area with some of the new armors are going to go ahead. If, if they absorb any shots, sure, your body's not going to take that damage. However, your armor is. So you might only be able to get into one or two engagements for your armor shot. Now, if you were to get just get shot in the stomach once, the arm twice, the other arm once, uh, it's definitely going to lower your health a lot. And you're going to have to go ahead and prop a propital and maybe CMS. But your armor is going to be in good condition. And once you fix that up, you're basically good to go. So... You guys got to watch out for that. Really, really nice. You also need much faster. And look at this, guys. It repairs so well. So the big issue with Zuck and Ceramic at level 6 is they don't repair for shit. So even using proper, repairing will only take 1 to 2.9 points out of the maximum durability. And with Mechanic, 0 0.6 to 1.7. So it's so, so good. Go ahead and use this armor if you want to be a Chad. Um, if we want to compare it to Zuck Repair, look at this. With Proper, you're going to lose 15.3 to 19.8 of max durability. That is a lot. Especially when, when this armor, um, I was buying 75 out of 75 Zucks for around 400k. So, it's going to be super, super viable. So, once again, this comes, I've just bought mine from the flea market. But I'll show you guys. We have this nice little dealer tab down here too. Um, it's a new trade up, so you're gonna need this new stuff called Cordura. I'm not familiar with that material, or I haven't seen it in gaming. I wish I could report more to you guys, but uh, I'll I'll explain more as soon as I can. And you can also use that to buy the new rig, which is down here as well. You're gonna need that, and then Aramid and Ripstop. So I believe these are types of like fabrics used in like normal um, Kevlar's and stuff. I'm not too sure. I'm sure one of you in the comments knows much more than I do, so I'm not gonna sit here and bullshit you guys. But yeah. Uh, other than that, we have this new small little rig now. Um, you know, it's just, it just has two uh, or four two by one slots. I really do like the aesthetic of it though. It's very simple, really cool. I like the aesthetic. I like playing dress up. I'm a faggot. I know. Then we have this new plate carrier. Now, this is a level five plate carrier that's going to surpass the Tactic plate carrier just simply in the fact that it's going to go ahead and have 60 armor points, which is really nice. And once again, it's only going to use 
that um, that chest slot. It also additionally comes with two three by one slots and a two by two slot, which is super super nice. So that's a big issue with the level five tactic. It doesn't have a, a two by two slot, which is great for getting now a little bit extra loot, pulling out a helmet, pulling out a vase, stuff like that, pulling out a clock. Hi Julia, my girlfriend just got home. Julia, say hi to the people on YouTube. Hi YouTube people. Yeah, she actually has an art channel. I'll plug it in the top right right now, dude. She's close to 100 subscribers. Go subscribe, or I swear to God, you have the big gay. Other than that, guys, we have the recoil pad. This is for the Ace Stock series, the double star recoil pad. I actually don't know what fucking um what that's for. We can go ahead and link search. I couldn't figure out what it was for. Oh, here it is, right here. This is the double star, I guess. Yeah, I was having issues. I believe this was in the game already. However, yeah, now there's a little stock for it, which makes it, you know, more relevant, I suppose. Or a recoil pad. So look out for that. Right here, we have a new foregrip for the SVD. Now, this foregrip is actually worse than the old best in slot foregrip. Let me see if I have a built SVD here. Uh, yeah, this foregrip right here is still going to be our best in slot um, for it right here. And it comes with 11 ergonomics, you know. It's kind of hard to uh, downplay it. I took the grip off just to show you that it wasn't adding that in for the ergonomics. So it has 11 ergonomics, which is great for a sniper rifle. This one only has 7 in one recoil. I believe the other one has 4 recoils. So I think this is dead content right here, honestly. I'm not going to cover it too much. We have a new suppressor for 7.62 in the 103. But the 103 is basically dead content as well until they add better ammunition besides BP. Especially with the nerfs to recoil. Uh, once again, we have another SVD mod now this one gives a little bit better recoil but you're going to be sacrificing ergonomics for one point of recoil i personally say it's not worth but you can uh you can make that decision on your own uh recoil stats can be even better now with the new recoil changes which i think is absurd i think that you should be able to account for recoil and then uh, you know go for ergonomic builds because the recoil is already super fucking overpowered in the game um, we have another new rail for the SVD right here. This is an attachment that goes on the front of the barrel that gives you a Picatinny on the bottom of your uh, your rail. We have a butt pad for the P90, a 10.6 inch barrel for the HK, and I believe this fits on an M4 as well, and another SVD mount. Um, I couldn't find it, but apparently there's also a new adapter for AK-101, which is going to allow you guys to go ahead and put the Gentech suppressors on the AK-101. So that's a slight buff to AK-101. Hopefully we'll see 60-year-round magazines for that gun soon, because it's basically forgotten about at this point. But yeah, guys, that just about covers this patch. Um, yeah, hop my Discord. I stream every single day, too. Um, yeah, I post it on Twitter and in my Discord when I go live. Or you can hit the bell to see notifications when I'm going live. And other than that, guys, uh, let me know if you want to see more, like, news-related videos and stuff like that. Or or what? Just stick to the gameplay. Just let me know how it is, guys. Um, yeah, sounds good, guys. Don't forget to smash that dislike button and tell me to kill myself. I'll see you guys all in the live stream and in the Discord. And peace out, guys. Have a great night.